Hello, and welcome back to the Franchise Growth Pod. My name is Belle, Director of Marketing at AC Inc., and I am back today with Franchise Growth Advisor extraordinaire, Roger. How's it going, Roger? It's going good, Belle. Always good to hang out with you. Oh my gosh, such a fun way, yeah. fun way to kick off the day. I don't know where, actually, it's later for you, right? We're two hours apart in time. Yes, yeah, so it's a little later in the day, but yeah, things are rolling, keeping Perfect. business moving. Amazing. Things are rolling. Things are going swimmingly. Um, you've got some beautiful ocean in your Zoom background behind you, which I am very jealous of. Right. And, you know, as we get into our topic today, you'll see that um, mindset is a big thing of what we're going to talk about. And for me and us as planners, having the right mindset to start your day and to plan is a big thing. So this background is a big help to me, you know, every day, just having that right my my mindset booster is this coffee right next to me. That's what I'm <laughs> focusing on today. I, I I use that I use that aid from time to time too. So yes, I yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I uh, I do have to say you're so right though the mindset thing like when you um when you can see something like beautiful in the morning I do feel like it's so much better. I used to live in a place that did not have a lot of windows like it was just like you know standard amount and now I live in a place where there's so many windows and we have like nice views and I can see the sunrise and stuff man, oh man, it changes your mood to be able to like see a beautiful sunrise or like we can kind of see the mountains on some days. Like it is so, so nice to be in a spot where you can like see nice things regular, even just like parks and stuff around your house. I think we've talked about, you and I are definitely fans of the daily walk um, to kind of get out and shift the mindset a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, For me, it gives you energy to do whatever you have to do. And I mean, you know, business can be cumbersome sometimes and just having that release, whatever it is for you know, whoever's listening to this podcast, find that, get it into your routine. It's just as important as doing the other things in business that you do every day. Oh my gosh. Sounds like we need to do an episode on that. There is no segue here. We are not doing an episode on my set, but we are doing doing an episode today all about using, Ooh, you just taught me this word, organizational operating systems. Like I did know what the word was, but I was like, what is it actually called? We're actually going to be talking about the EOS model and specifically the VTO, um, the Vision Traction Organizer, Traction, the book by Gina Wickman that we are all obsessed with, franchising is just all about. Um, And we're going to be talking really about how to use um, one of these uh, organizational uh, systems for um, better business, for running better businesses, for coaching franchisees to success, um, for just seeing more success in our daily kind of day-to-day operations even. Um, And I'm really excited to hear your thoughts because you, um, as well as all of our advisors, obviously work with a lot of really incredible franchisees as kind of a fractional field coach. Uh, You work with franchisors through executive coaching and through all of it, you use the system. And this is kind of our go-to model. Um, I'm curious, what was your first interaction with Traction specifically? Like, are you, uh, have you used other systems in the past and found this one? And I know AC Inc. has this system, obviously, but what was kind of your first interaction with it? Um, so for AC Inc., I know we're really heavily into it for some of the brands that work, they're a little bigger. So there's a lot more bureaucratic ways of doing it, but really it's still on brand with the EOS model. And what I'll say is like, and you'll hear me say it, I guess, later in this podcast, there's variance to it. So mm-hmm. I've touched it in the past. I mean, AC Inc.'s version is, I know we, we have the way we utilize it as well. So I have touched it in the past with other brands. But, you know, I'm really loving the way AC Inc. utilizes it because, you know, we touch many different clients and it's so adaptable in helping them along that path. That's so true. And that's actually a really great point to kind of start off with is I think um, I know when I was first introduced uh, into the franchise world years ago, uh, people were kind of talking about this model track, this book traction and the the model that it talks about and kind of how to build out um, your business, how to build out your mission. Um, how to keep track of your goals, all of this kind of stuff. And there's all this terminology, right? There's all this terminology being thrown out. There's rocks, which are actually your really, really big focuses, like your huge, huge focuses for that quarter, for that year. But when someone first was like, what's your rock for this? Like, I was like, I don't know. When you first get into it, there's a lot of terms. And I think my biggest misconception was that we had to use it the exact way the book said, or that the the website was sharing or whatever, but you're so right. There is a lot of variance and it kind of reminds me of any organizational tool. Like I'm a big Asana fan. I know some people are big Google calendar fans. Like 
Everyone has different tools that help us stay like organized and on top of things. And I think you can use those in the way that works for you. And I feel like that's what we're doing. That's what everyone's doing with all of these different organizational system models um, is kind of using them and adjusting them so that they work for your business and work for your culture. Um, and I think that's a pretty big misconception when you kind of go into using something like this. It's like, oh, I have to use it this exact way because like, this is how it's laid out. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting when um, you go into that and you kind of have to start like reassessing what's going to work for you. And for AC Inc., I know um, we had, we've had tons and tons of meetings around like, how are we going to best use this for us? Because we utilize it as a company as well. Um, and then how are we going to best utilize it for clients? And how is that going to fit into our coaching process or our field coach training and all those kinds of things? it maybe let's let's start with just kind of an overall what is this model like what is it kind of focused on what are kind of some of the basic foundations of it um how do you use it with your clients like anything just to kind of give people a little insight into what we're going to be talking about in a little bit more depth here right so let's take a step back from i guess to give an overarching understanding so the eoms s model and i'll try and spit it out the entrepreneurial operating system okay. right that that's what we're talking about, right? It, it, but really, what it does is it addresses six components that any business must manage to strengthen and be successful in business, right? And when we talk about the six components, we're talking about um, the vision, people, data issues, process, those types of things, and of course, traction rounds out the six components. Yeah. Now, the EOS model, when we talk about these components, this applies to all businesses, big and small, and in any industry. So when we're talking about adaptability, this is what we're talking about. And this is why people love the EOS model, because you can be a big brand, you can be a small brand, you can be in retail, you can be in service, and it'll be adaptable for all. So now, getting specifically back to traction, what traction does, it helps a brand with their focus, their discipline, and their accountability, as you know, we see with clients every day throughout the company. So to your question, what traction really does, it, it ties all these other components together to help everyone execute and stay on point with the overall vision. Wow, that was incredible. I <laughs> I feel like I was fumbling around earlier and then you just said it so beautifully. Oh, I should have just asked that right off the bat. That was amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that gives people definitely a better understanding of like, it does cover everything. It's not specific to franchising. I think franchise systems often really love a system. We, that's part of what franchising is. And so I think having one that, um, and again, it does work in any industry. It's not just, you know, service. It's not just retail, those kinds of things. But being able to take that and kind of apply it across the board is so helpful. And then as we mentioned, being able to customize it or take what kind of makes sense for your company or makes sense for your culture and apply that um, is also, I think, a big, like a big highlight that people really like about this system is it really does work that way. If you were going to say, like, for me, the thing that stands out that we do with our clients from the traction model, um, there's a lot of the goal setting, a lot of the accountability, um, and a lot of the planning that I feel like we really take from that uh, system um, and have kind of adapted to the AC model or some of our field coach training infrastructure and those kinds of things. Would you kind of agree those are kind of the key points that we really, really leverage a lot in terms of our client work? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Across the board and with everything that we do, it's, you know, for me, traction is really a fundamental process. Mm -hmm. So for the clients I work with and the entire, like you mentioned, AC um, Inc. team, you know, when we work with them, I have them think of traction as a management process per se, mm -hmm. right? So nothing that they haven't done before, but yeah. we're trying to really optimize and get them um focused in on some of those things we were uh, we were talking about a little while ago about in the EOS system itself, some of those things that, you know, they may see as maybe macro or maybe even granular, but it's really to get them to think about the way they're organizing their business and have accountability on a daily basis. And like we said, it's essentially the basic operating system that we at AC Inc. will like our clients to run their business on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something I try to implement from day one. And I feel that 
every client that I work with, and I'm sure like our colleagues at AC Inc. refer back to. It's not something that's like, here you go, go run with it. It's, yeah. you know, we want them to think about all these things and we want to touch base. How are you doing with your rocks? Are there any concerns in those types of things? So, you know, again, back to my first slide, it's really fun fundamental to, you know, how we work with clients in the process. Yeah, it's so true. And that's why I wanted to do an episode on, um, on this topic is that it really is kind of the foundations of a lot of our uh, coaching work, a lot of our goal setting, a lot of that accountability, the management. I love thinking about that as it really is like a management tool um, in that way. And it covers all areas of the business. If you were going to say kind of, um, let's talk about the VTO, because I think the VTO is something that um, I even use with our marketing strategy clients. Like it's it's something we use in kind of all uh, all client interactions is that that VTO. So the vision traction organizer is um the kind of goal setting tool and then that accountability tool. So kind of being able to keep track about what we're tackling in 90 days, what we're tackling for the year, how these are contributing to the big, hairy, audacious goal. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about how we use that and how that would like, do we introduce it in the first call? And I maybe know these answers, but I want to ask you and you're going to explain it because you're very much better at explaining than I am. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So the VTO, which is the Vision Traction Organizer, it's when you think about it, it's the key document when executing the traction process. Okay. So what does that mean, right? It helps with the fundamental as aspects of ac executing traction. So one, like simplifying the strategic planning process when you look at it, getting your vision out of your head and onto paper. So that's a big one for a lot of people. Like, you know, you'll hear all the time, I have all these thoughts. Well, when you start to look at the VTO, you'll see, you actually transfer that mm -hmm. and getting clarity on your co your company's goal and future outlook. So those are big things to that. Now, when someone actually has to sit down and complete that VTO, they have to consider a few things. And this is where we really are st starting point with this fundamental process is, is the vision for the business, right? Again, you know, we've talked about this and, you know, we talk about in very various aspects of business is your vision. So when we talk about the vision and the VTO itself, we're talking about your business's core values. It's like, it's often what you would think it would be fundamental, but it's often lost. Like, so you think about your core values, you think about the core focus of your brand or uh, for, for you, you know, you may call it the differentiators. Mm -hmm. What separates you from everybody else? Not every um, business thinks about that. So why, what does separate me? long-term planning, like 10-year goals, short-term planning, like three to five-year goals, and marketing and strategy process. So that's what we talk about when we talk about the visions in the VTO. And now the other part of it is when completing the VTO is we talk about the more immediate traction items, and this is what you were referring to. So the annual business planning or the 90-day planning the rocks for the quarter and what's really like when I say rocks, I like to frame it as what's on your plate and how are you going to get it done? And then any issues that will hinder the advancement of that strategic planning that they're trying to achieve. Amazing. Amazing. And that I think just lays it out kind of clearly as to what you're going to get when you sit down and work through that VTO. And you're totally right. It, it covers that strategic planning and it covers the vision piece um, both in one. So it does both of those things. And then when it comes to the accountability, and that's what I think is so interesting is to think about this as a management system, because it's one thing to, and this is still huge, it's still a huge thing to sit down, work out your vision, right? Maybe with a coach, maybe with a co-founder or your ops person or, um, you know, your manager or whatever, but put, sitting down and working through that vision piece, then working through that strategic plan, then there's the actually doing the things, right? Actually accomplishing those focuses. And that's where I think this system is so interesting is that it's not just a goal setting process. It's not just a vision setting process. It's actually both of those things. Plus then it keeps you accountable by having, um, we've set, we have it set up on a spready, my favorite thing, <laughs> but, um, but people have, like I've seen people write it out on, um, I think this is crazy to have it printed out and just like have on the side of your desk, but <laughs> neither here nor there. Some people do write it down. Um, some people um, have it leveraged in like a more of a Google doc form, but however you're kind of laying it out, I think spreadsheet is definitely one of the most common, but it then makes you kind of 
go back to actual setting the small goals that are going to accomplish those bigger strategic plan items, which are going to contribute to the vision. And then having either, yeah, again, someone like a coach, um, a field coach for franchisees or um, area manager or whatever you want to call it, um, or an executive coach for a franchisor or a founder, um, having someone kind of hold you accountable to those items and be working through and kind of checking back in, right? Are there challenges? Like, that's what I love is that it covers challenges to those small steps. It covers, do we have to move around timelines, right? Is this not contributing to this goal, really? I love that it holds that accountability as well as focuses on the big picture pieces. I think that's so right. Yeah, and Bell, it's really, really, really a thinking tool, right? Um, and a team tool is, you know, the key word I would use there. I, I would, you know, admonish anyone who is completing the BTO to think of it as, okay, I'm, you know, a C-level suite person or any of those personnel that you were talking about to say, okay, I'm going to complete this and have my team work on it with me. No, it's really a team tool, you know, to have like accountability that everybody's got to be bought into it. And it really is an operating system for the entire company, not just one person or one team. That's so true. And again, kind of makes it stand out in that way. Because I think a lot of, again, that goal setting, vision setting, you know, templates or different tools that I've seen really are kind of built from a top down approach. And you're so right, like that, this kind of model where you're kind of actually implementing it and integrating it directly into the business, into the day to day, into the meeting check ins into all those things. It, it's a it's a community thing, or it's a it's a team thing, like we all have to feel committed to these goals. We all have to know what action steps are kind of committing to those rocks for the quarter. Um, and you kind of learn the terminology as you go, I feel like. <laughs> There's not that many fun words. <laughs> there are a few. <laughs> exactly. um, that is so, so helpful. The only thing I was going to ask kind of as a last, um, and this is, you know, this is mostly just to talk about how different um, organizational operating management type systems can actually help help all parts of your company grow. Um, and it's it's also just validating that you can use it in the way that works for you, right? The way that we just described that BTO is, is a way that we often use it, um, but other people use it in different ways. This is really just kind of trying to showcase that to, to uh, people who are in that space and are looking for uh, some support in that operations uh, management system area. Um, but the one thing I was gonna ask that I think is really interesting is what do you think are some of the wins that have come out of using this model with you and your clients, with you and the performance groups you work with? like? What are the what are some things that you've seen happen? Maybe even people getting clarity or big action steps being accomplished or team buy-in and like community. What are some of the things that you've seen when someone has implemented this into their franchise system? Right. And you know, the first thing I'll start off with is there's so many ways you can get wins with traction. You know, for me, it's the, the biggest win I'll start with is we're always seeing the development of leadership style so like as we were talking it's so key because once this leadership really adopts to and buys into tra traction it trickles down right and it starts to permeate the business itself and the day-to-day -day thinking it's not like oh i do traction like you know we've talked before we're planners so yeah. once you have that mindset and it becomes habitual then you really start to see wins you know at that point so let me give you a specific example. I had a, a, a brand that, you know, they didn't have divine processes in place. Their staff were, you know, good staff. They were getting wins here and there, but there was no consistency across the brand. And the management knew that they were having success, but they didn't really know where they were getting their wins from. Mm. Now, you know, our process, as we, you know, start with clients with traction, as they started to get this really refined in, and started to fine tune some of these things, you know, really analyze their goals and the rocks and where they wanted to go. They really started to get a focus. Their team started to really tie in and, you know, any obstacles would become apparent. And, you know, after that, you know, they really to started to see wins in different areas of the business. Again, their wins didn't come from one thing. I think the overarching win came from leadership style using traction, but, what they really started to see is that they were working as a unit. That's the a huge win. And that their goals were actually attainable. 
they didn't see like, okay, we're getting wins. We know we're profitable, but they saw like, okay, we're getting wins together. There's a process to it and it is attainable. So that's a huge win that I saw with that brand. And they were already successful, but now that they could identify it, organize it and go forward towards their goal. Wow. That's actually really interesting. And so true. Is that I think sometimes we forget that these types of tools are so beneficial even if you are doing well, or even if your numbers are up or your team is happy, like implementing things is not just for when things are wrong or things are not going super great or something like that. Like there are wins to be had, even when it's optimizing something that's working and maybe even getting clarity on why that is. That's so, so valuable. What a great testimonial. Um, I unfortunately have another call to run to um, my friend Rhonda. I'm so busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Yes. Um, I am so, so happy we got a chance to do an episode on this topic. I just think it's it's such an important thing to kind of come back to um, and have implemented or even reassess how you're using your operations or management tools, um, how you're getting by and all those things. I just think it's so valuable. I'm so excited we had you on today to talk about it. Thank you so, so much. You are always so much fun to have on the pod. Absolutely. And thank you for having me. And, you know, I'll always try and get in my last word. If you ever see an email from me, my tagline is trust the process and success will follow. And traction is a key point to getting that online for a lot of brands. So do trust the process and traction will help with that. I love that. That is so, so great. Um, well, uh, if anyone wants to come hear all the wisdom of Roger um, in a community setting, please do come join at the AC roundtables. Roger and I are on those um, regularly. Um, these are weekly peer-to-peer -peer collaborative calls for franchisors specifically um, hosted by the AC team and they um, are on Zoom. So super accessible. Um, welcome to drop in whenever you are available. Um, you can get all the details for joining this free community at angelacote.com slash roundtables. So please do come hang out with us there. We would love that. Um, and, uh, for anyone, absolutely. sorry, but absolutely love to see everybody. Yeah, no, it's such a great group. We've had a couple really big ones actually recently, some bigger community round tables, which have been so fun. And I want to do more of them. I feel like they're always so fun when you get everyone all on one. Um, but, uh, I also wanted to say thank you so much for anyone who is listening. And if you haven't yet, it would mean the absolute world to us. If you would leave um, a rating or review, wherever you stream your podcast helps us get the podcast out to more and more franchise friends. Um, and Roger, that's it. Hope you will be awesome today. All right. You as well. Take care, Bill.